Hello, Sigma! When Rutherford wanted to discover his model of the atom, what he did was he smashed alpha particles into a bunch of gold atoms and then he noted down the deflections which helped him to discover his model of the atom. Even today, in the Large Hadron Collider, protons are being smashed together to discover new elementary particles. And I think the most famous of which is the Higgs boson. And when I say smash together, all I mean is collision. These various particles are collided together to discover many new particles. And hence, uh, we, what we can see is that learning about collision is very, very important from the point of view of physics. And today, we are going to do just that. We are going to study this very special type of collision known as the elastic collision. Now, why the elastic collision is special uh, is what you are going to find out later in the video. For now, we need to understand under what conditions collisions may or may not happen. For example, if I have a ball, right, this is a ball which has a mass of, let's say, M1. Like this ball has a mass M1 and we have another ball which has a mass M2 and these two balls are moving away from each other that is M1 is uh, moving in this direction whereas uh, M2 is moving in this direction let's say M1 is moving with a velocity of V1 and M2 is moving with a velocity of V2 then do you think collision will ever happen? Even a five-year-old can tell that in these type of situations, a collision will never happen because they are never going to meet each other. Right? So this is a pure common sense. Another condition which is uh, very obvious is that if M1 is uh, traveling in this direction with a velocity of V1 and uh, M2 is traveling in this direction with a velocity of a V2, then collision is surely going to happen, right? 100% chance of them colliding. This is again a very obvious condition. Now, a condition which is not so obvious is what if uh, M2 and M1 are traveling in the same direction, right? And M2 has a velocity of V2. Then under what velocities are they going to collide or not going to collide? Well, as a physics student, if you think about it carefully and use your knowledge of relative velocities, then what you can find is that if V1 is less than or equal to V2, then collision is never going to happen, right? Collision never happens. Collision is only possible between these two bodies when V1 is greater than V2 then collision is possible. Because again, if V1 is uh, less than or equal to V2, M1 is never going to catch hold of M2. So they are basically never going to collide. So now since we know under what conditions a collision may or may not happen, now what we are going to look at is the elastic collision, the case of elastic collision. Now, first of all, you might wonder why is the elastic collision called elastic collision at the first place? Well, the reason is because elastic collisions happens between elastic bodies. And if you are wondering what elastic bodies themselves are, then you must know that elastic bodies regain their original shape when the deforming force is removed. For example, if you have a stress ball or a rubber ball and you press it very hard, then what happens is that a rubber ball or the stress ball is going to get deformed, 
And as soon as you stop uh, pressing it so hard, then it will try to regain its original shape. And hence, such bodies are known as elastic bodies. Whereas, if you have something like a dough of a flour, some kind of flour like a wheat flour or corn flour, if you have a dough of it, then if you press it, then it does not regain its original shape, right? Uh, your, you can see your uh, fingerprints or uh, finger impressions uh, onto the dough. And hence, such bodies are actually known as inelastic bodies. And we are soon going to discuss about the collisions between such inelastic bodies, but not in today's video. Today's video is dedicated only to elastic collisions. And hence, this is what elastic bodies are. So, whenever you press a stress ball or a rubber ball, what you will notice is that it will try to push your hand up the, in the other direction, right from Newton's third law. And hence, uh, what it is trying to do is just regain its original shape. So, let us say that there is a second condition that uh, V1 is greater than V2 is uh, satisfied and these two bodies collide, right? M1 catches hold of M2 and they collide with each other. What happens at the instant when they are colliding with each other? Let us quickly analyze that. So, if M1 is colliding with M2, then at the moment they are colliding, since they are elastic bodies, they are going to look something like this. Basically, they are going to deform. And why are they going to deform? Well, they are going to deform because of contact force. That is because of the normal reaction between the two bodies. They are going to deform due to that force. That force is going to be the deforming force. Right? And once uh, they deform, what they will do is they will try to regain their original shape. And because they are elastic bodies, right? This will not happen between inelastic bodies. But since these two masses are elastic bodies, hence what will happen is that they will try to regain their original shape. And in that process, what they are going to do is push each other in the other directions. And hence, there will be a momentum or a energy exchange in the process, right? As they are regaining the original shape, they are going to push, it, push each other. And there will be exchange of momentum and kinetic energies between the two bodies. That is what is going to happen is first the kinetic energy of M1 and M2, right? The kinetic energy of uh, M1 and M2 is going to get converted into the potential energy, right? The potential energy. It's like a pressure, pressing two springs together. This is like pressing two springs together or two springs from the other directions, right? From the two other two directions from its ends. If you push a spring from its end, then you're going to see something very similar. So basically when they deform, a potential energy is being stored in the deformed shape. And then when they try to regain the original shape, the potential energy again gets converted into kinetic energy. So this is go the kinetic energy is going to get converted into potential energy of M1 and M2, right? While they are deforming, so this is while they are deforming, and this potential energy, again, while they are regaining their original shape, like, let me call it reforming. I do not know if that is a technical term, but let us just call it. So while they're reforming, this potential energy, again, is going to get converted into kinetic energy of M1 and M2. But the kinetic energy that M1 and M2 have separately uh, before the collision is go not going to remain the same. It is going to change as we will soon see. And uh, momentum also obviously is uh, conserved in this process as there are no external forces on the system. If I consider M1 and M2 on the system, there are just no external forces, right? All the forces are internal within the system. As you can see here, the contact force is within the system and uh, in an equal and opposite direction. So while the two bodies are colliding. And now what our task 
is uh, of this video is to find the velocities of m1 and m2 after the collision see after colliding they are soon going to separate as i told you because they are going to regain their original shape and they are going to travel in some different uh, velocity this is the assumption that we are making maybe they might end up having the same velocity after collision we never know but we are making an assumption that uh, this mass m1 has a velocity of v1 prime after the collision and similarly the mass m2 has a velocity of v2 prime after the collision right we, that while we are solving this v1 and v2 might turn out to be equal to uh, v1 prime and v2 prime that might happen but that is what the math going to tell us. So let us solve for this. So as I told you, the special case of uh, elastic uh, collisions, right? In the special case of elastic collision, momentum and kinetic energy are conserved. Simply because the body is perfectly regained their original shape after the collision. Now, in practical life, there are no uh, perfectly elastic uh, bodies, but let us uh, first under understand uh, the concept of elastic bodies, and then we are going to look into the more practical case. You know that we have been doing that since we have begun this video course on mechanics. So, momentum and kinetic energy are conserved for the case of elastic collision. And hence, first conserving momentum, what we are going to find is that uh, m1 v1 plus m2 v2 is equal to m1 v1 prime plus m2 v2 prime. And then let us take m1 and m2 uh, terms uh, on uh, uh, two different sides of the equal to sign. That is, let us collect the M1 and M2 terms. Let us take this M1 term on this side and this M2 term on the other side. Then what we are going to get is that M1 V1 minus V1 prime is equal to M2 V2 prime minus V2. And let us call this equation, equation number one. Next, what we are going to do is conserve the kinetic energy. So you can see that if I try to conserve kinetic energy, what I'll be left with is that half m1 v1 squared plus half m2 v2 squared is uh, going to be equal to half m1 uh, v1 prime squared plus half m2 v2 prime squared. And all the halves are going to cancel, right? These uh, halves are going to cancel. And again, what we are going to do is collect the M1 and M2 terms on either side of the equal to sign. And uh, doing that, I will be left with M1 into V1 squared minus uh, V1 prime squared is going to be equal to M2 into V2 prime squared minus V2 squared. And then I'm going to uh, use the algebraic uh, property that uh, v1 minus v1 prime v1 squared minus v1 prime squared is uh, equal to v1 minus v1 prime multiplied by v1 plus v1 prime and that is equal to m2 into v2 prime minus v2 multiplied by v2 prime plus v2 let us call this equation number two now what you can see here is that we can divide equation number two uh, from equation or we can divide equation number one from equation number two that is I'm going to divide equation one from equation two and uh, hence this m1 v1 minus v1 prime and m2 v2 minus v2 prime is going to cancel from this equation number two right so oh, if I do that what I'll be left with is v1 plus v1 prime is equal to v2 plus v2 prime plus v2 and then what I'm going to do is take the unprimed variables on one side and the primed variables on the other side. I'm going to separate the unprimed and primed variables. So I'll be left with V1 minus V2. Yeah, V1 minus V2 is equal to V2 prime minus V1 prime. And here 
you can notice a very interesting stuff about elastic collision. That the velocity, what is this? This is the velocity with which the two balls are approaching each other, right? That's the velocity of approach or which is the relative velocity between the two bodies. That is, if I assume that one of the bodies is stationary, that is, I put my reference frame into the reference frame of one of the bodies, let's say M2, then I would see that M1 is approaching me with this speed, right? And similarly, if after the collision, M2 will be separating. If I put myself into the reference frame of M1, then after collision, M2 will be separating from me with that speed. Hence, this is nothing but the velocity of approach. That is the velocity with which the two balls are approaching each other before the collision is equal to the velocity of separation. And uh, as you are soon going to find out, this is only true in the case of elastic collision. In the next video, you are going to see that while I'm discussing in elastic collision, this is not at all true. The velocity of approach is not equal to the velocity of separation. And hence, this is something that makes elastic collision very, very special. And hence, let's give it a special name or a just uh, number this equation as equation number three. Next, what I can do is multiply equation number three with m1 throughout the equation and then multiply it with m2 throughout the equation. If you're wondering why I'm doing that, well, you need to have patience. You are soon going to find out. So first, let's multiply equation three with m1. So I'll be left with m1 v1 minus m1 v2 is equal to m1 v2 prime minus m1 v1 prime and if i multiply it with m2 then i'm going to get m2 v1 minus the m2 v2 is equal to m2 v2 prime minus m2 v1 prime right let us number this equation as equation number four and equation number five okay and let me quickly write uh, again our very fourth equation this uh, equation number one. Okay, so I will not be requiring equation number one actually. What I'll be requiring is this equation. Huh, so let us give it some name. Let us call it equation number A. Anyways, it does not really matter whether we give it a name or not because I'm going to rewrite it again. So uh, that equation number A is M1 V1 plus M2 V2. is equal to m1 v1 prime plus m2 v2 prime. Right. This was uh, our equation A. Let us number it as equation 6. Next, what we can do is subtract equation number 6 from equation number 5 to obtain v1 prime. You can easily see that if I subtract equation number 6 from equation number 5, I will get V1 prime. Or rather, let me subtract equation 5 from equation 6. That is so because I want positive V1 prime on my right hand side. If I would have subtracted equation 6 from equation 5, then I would have got a negative V1 prime on the right hand side. So, I basically I want a positive v1 prime obviously otherwise then I will have to shift the negative sign on the other side and it would become very cumbersome. So what I'm going to do is subtract equation 5 from equation 6. When I do that I will get v1 common and uh, m1 minus m2 after that I will get plus uh, 2 m2 v2 is going to be equal to m1 plus m2 times v1 prime. So I will get v1 prime is equal to v1 multiplied by m1 minus m2 divided by m1 plus m2 plus 2m2 v2 divided by m1 plus m2. And that is exactly what we wanted to find, right? 
we wanted to find the velocity of the first ball after the collision. And this is exactly just that. But this is just part of the solution because I have just found the velocity of the first ball. Let us now find what the velocity of the second ball going to be after the collision. Okay. To find that, let me quickly add equation 6 and equation 4. Right. To equation 6, I am going to add equation number 4. If I do that, what will I get? I will get m1, v1 is uh, the same on both the terms on the left hand side. So I will get 2m1, v1. And then I'm going to add those. So I will get m2 minus m1. So plus m2 minus m1 times of v2, right? Yes, times of v2 is going to be equal to this time v1 prime is going to get cancelled because we are adding equation 6 and equation 4. And what I'll be left with is m1 plus m2 times v2 prime. And hence what we'll get is v2 prime is equal to m2 minus m1 times of v2 divided by m1 plus m2 and uh, plus 2m1 v1 divided by m1 plus m2. And this again is the velocity of the second ball after the collision. And we are done. This is what we were set to find. We wanted to find the velocity of the first ball after the collision and the velocity of the second ball after the collision. And in fact, you can see a very strange similarity between the two. Right here we have a m1 minus m2. And uh, here we have m2 minus m1. Right. Here we have a v1. And over here we have a v2. Below we have uh, m1 plus m2 over here. And over here too we have m1 plus m2. Here we have m1 v1 which is the momentum of the first ball before the collision. And over here we have m2 v2 which is the momentum of the second ball after the collision. And hence you can see that there is they are kind of symmetric right they are kind of similar and which is useful if you want to memorize these formulas well i don't recommend anyone to memorize the formulas right because as you're solving problems you are just going to memorize them anyways automatically but if you want to memorize them then this is a good way of memorizing these formulas okay so we are all done for this video if you enjoyed this video do not forget to subscribe to my channel and like this video i will see you in another video with uh, another interesting physics concept maybe next time i'm what i'm going to cover is inelastic collision so yeah thank you for watching